<laughs> okay, enough of that. <clears throat> I am uh, recording just a small snippet. I hope this sounds good. Oh, yes, I forgot to include my EDC of the day, which uh, I am carrying uh, when I filmed my shave of the day a little earlier. So I thought that I would go ahead and put together uh, a presentation of the EDC of the day and then include it with the shave of the day here in just a moment, okay? In the meantime, I will go ahead and uh, kill the music. Hopefully uh, that was all understandable. Um, I'm getting ready to head out to go to uh, physical therapy that I have three times a week. So uh, before I do that, I wanted to show you guys today's EDC of the day is my Norseman by Grimsmo Knives. The brothers Grimsmo, John and Eric Grimsmo, all famous for their Norseman, their Viking helmet, Spartan guy. That's him right there. Sweet knife, let me tell you. And you can see as some of the uh, pattern has, or the anodizing has faded a bit, actually been worn off because I have carried and flipped this knife literally thousands of times, I'm sure. And it is very, very sharp. It's, I would say, every bit of 85% as sharp right now as it was the day that this knife arrived. This knife is uh, put together by John and his brother Eric and uh, they are from Ontario, Canada. Uh, primarily done with a CNC machine. As you can see the CNC grind lines, I hope. Yeah, you can see, let me wipe some of the crud off. You can see that right down through there. And across there a little a little thicker perhaps this is a, a very unique blade sort of a a sheep's foot I guess tanto style I, I don't know what you would call that it uh, comes with ceramic detent ball that John fixes and m prepares himself um, this knife is as close to a custom, I'm not speaking in terms of generalities like all of their Norseman knives, I'm speaking of this knife in particular. And if you've seen my other videos, you already know what I'm talking about, but I even had a, a little Spartan guy, Nordic helmet guy right here, put on the clip. Uh, John wrote, custom made Let's see, what is that? Custom made September 2013. Custom made September 2013 for Mark McLean. That's because this knife is so close to custom that it is a custom. Now this knife in general, like I said earlier, speaking in generalities, this knife is not considered a custom knife when they come out. In fact, they, they consider these uh, a mid-tech. And uh, that's okay. For the price, well, unless you have extras put on it, like, uh, you know, different things that cost more, like I have done, then you're going to be paying a, a mid-tech price, starting out at 550 bucks, which is a good price for a, a mid-tech and an excellent price for a custom if you can find one for that price, which you can't usually. They put together these ball bearings themselves. They make, or let me say this, they customize the pivot to uh, suit themselves. They buy them already prefabbed and then they shave off the top layer of the pivot and then they shave the sides down to make it sort of a not really octagonal but to to make it fit 
in a formingly style or fashion just as if a an octagonal shape had been made. It keeps it from rotating. That way the little Norseman guy faces the same direction this time, this time, this time, etc., etc. And that's why John wanted it that way. This was one of the last knives that they did some uh, computer code changing on for the CNC just so it would uh, suit John's <laughs> particulars. He is very particular. I didn't say he was OCD. <laughs> I'm going to see him at Blade Show in Atlanta June 3rd through the 5th, so I'm not going to call him any name, that's for sure. Uh, this uh, lanyard I, I got uh, specifically made for this knife off eBay, and uh, I love it. One of my most favorite knives to carry, RWL 34 steel, and it really holds an edge. The edge retention is fantastic. That, my friends, is a buttery smooth knife. That's exactly how John Grimsmo calls it. He says, that knife is buttery smooth, quote unquote, and it is. Let me tell you, it really is buttery smooth. The Norseman by Grimsmo Knives. Today's EDC, that's my everyday carry for today, is part of my shave of the day. Just a little preface here to that upcoming uh, shave of the day. If you like shaving, wet shaving, and collecting brushes or aftershave bottles, whatever the case may be, you stick around because I've got something I guarantee that will suit your fancy, okay? Have a great day. Transitioning. Ooh. shave today. In fact, I've already got the bowl full of some soap there. Well, today's shave is uh, probably with a brand of soap you've never heard of. Have you ever heard of South Florida's wet shaving soap? No. <laughs> well, that's because it's not out yet. Miami Nights. That's what they're going to call it. And I have even absconded a little of their aftershave. South Florida Wet Shavers, the uh, group on Facebook. In case uh, you've got the opportunity, then uh, I would be sure and uh, patronize these guys, say hi to them, and uh, test out their their shaving soap. You might like that. I guarantee it's, it smells nice. It really does. I uh, I have not had the opportunity to lather it just yet, but I have had the chance to wear the aftershave. In fact, I put this stuff on uh, this morning. I, I had some on yesterday and the day before that. Uh, it smells wonderful. It really does. And I like that scent. I don't know really what it is that it stands out to me in particular there. I mean, it's a, it's a mixture of things. They've got all kinds of different things in there, but uh, there's one, I guess, one note in particular that's really appealing to me and I, I, I have yet to figure it out exactly what it is. In fact, this uh, soap and aftershave will go on sale on June 25th of this year. Miami Nights is what they're going to be calling it. Now it's got uh, some ruby red grapefruit in it. Uh, I mean, I can scent, uh, take a whiff of this scent and after a while I can pick that out. But I'll be honest, uh, that's not the scent. There's one note in there that really grabs me and just makes me say, hey, I like this. You know what I think it is? I believe it's frankincense. I think that's it, no joke. That or cedar and the vetiver that's coming in together. But uh, anyway, they say that it's got ruby red grapefruit in it that I just mentioned. Uh, lemon, of course, 
that was one of the first notes I, I could smell as soon as I whiffed it. Uh, also, it's followed with middle notes of peppercorn, ginger, jasmine, and a hint of peppermint. And then they've got notes coming through of natural patchouli, and I like that. Cedar and vetiver, like I mentioned, labdanum, and last but not least, frankincense, which is another top favorite of mine. I think that's what it is that I'm sensing, and I, I smell that, and I say, wow, that's the scent I have to have more of. I want some of that. I like that. You really can't beat frankincense as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I was uh, one of the guys back in the old Bible days. You never know. That boy likes that frankincense and Maradona. <laughs> I think they said that about me a few times years ago. Anyway, um, my buddy John Romanoff, uh, he asked me to do a, uh, a test on this soap. It may not lather worth a dang, I'll be honest with you. It may not, but it smells good. I can tell you that, I can attest to that right now. Whether it lathers or not, we have yet to find out. This brush I'm using today is made of ebony wood. Ebony and ivory. <laughs> well, <clears throat> maybe not ivory, just ebony wood, hand turned by Dennis Coluccio at his studio in Cherry Valley, upstate New York. Finest grade silver tip badger, and this is one of my earlier brushes that I got from, from Dennis, one of the first badgers that I got. I really like it too. And the razor that I'm going to be using today is this one from, yes, Mr. Armon. <laughs> James Daniel Armon made this from Through the Fire Fine Crafts. You can see their little insignia right there, I think. Yeah, there you go. TT, <coughs> TTFC through the fire, fine crafts. And uh, Mary, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, Maria Armand, his wife makes the fantastic soap. But this uh, is the razor I'm using. It's a seven eighths with a large monkey's tail and Kevlar scales, like they make the uh, police officers and uh, servicemen's flak jackets, they call them, or uh, bulletproof vests out of that stuff. Okay, I need to tell you a little bit more about the South Florida wet shavers and what they're doing here. I understand that Miami Nights is going to be the name of this, and you can check it out on their Etsy page starting uh, January 25th, uh, June 25th, my bad. Um, also, the price on this is going to be $17 for the six ounce tub of shaving soap, and then they're going to be asking 12 bucks for the 100 milliliters aftershave, which I'm not sure, I don't think it will be in one of these containers, but that's just what they sent me to sample. <clears throat> uh, we have already made certain that uh, the scent is very nice. I like the scent. We have yet to find out about its lather ability, so we're going to do that right now. I've had my brush soaking in some hot water, I'm wringing that out right now. I don't want to get too much water, but you know, you also have to find a, a happy medium, I guess. You, you don't want to have too little either. So I've already applied some lubricant. <laughs> yes, I already have my pre-shave oil on. And today I'm using some pre-shave oil from uh, the soap lady in downtown Paducah, Kentucky, the farmer's daughter. Beard oil. Kentucky bourbon is the, the style, and it smells nice. It doesn't smell like Kentucky bourbon to me. It smells like vanilla, but call it what you want. It smells nice. <clears throat> okay, going to add a little bit of water here. Just stirring it up, whipping it into a frenzy. <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. It seems to be lathering up really nicely. It really does. Can you see that? Really nice. I think that uh, that will bring about a good lather. Well, hi, my buddy. Hi. How are you? 
Hmm? You want to say hi? Yes. Okay, come here. That? I have some on my finger. Oh, okay. Now, come on. Come on. It's, it's, it's like I wiped it off. It doesn't matter. It's <laughs> just soap, silly boy. <laughs> hi. Hi. This is my buddy Logie. <laughs> Logan has has always wanted to shave with Papa, haven't when you? When you grow up. When you grow up. Right. You want to help me put this on? You don't want to put it on me? Why? Because you're a big guy. So, you? it doesn't matter. No, not but I stopped. Mmm, it smells nice. Can you smell it? Nope. No? Mm -mm. What do you think of that? Pretty good lather, huh? You gotta have a good lather before the razor will go through the whiskers. You want to try a sample? Mm. <laughs> Smells good, doesn't it? Mmm. So what scratched your arm there, buddy? Right here. Let's a see kitty. your arm. Hold a it up kitty. there. A kitty. The kitty? Hold it so they can see it on camera. Turn it sideways. Now, see there? There's the scratch right there. That old kitty cat did that? Mean old cat. That old stinker. Mean old poopy head. <laughs> yeah, mean. Okay. Thanks for coming on and saying hi. Well, okay, I've got to I, lather up here. I got bathroom. Okay, you go ahead and take care of business. Okay, we can sing later. <laughs> poop no. I think poop is your newest word. It's funny, just the other day you were saying big words like Lamborghini and... Do you still say that one? Okay. <clears throat> That's so nice. All right. Lamborghinis are cool. Not they are cool. cool. Yeah, you're right. They are cool. Always forget. Cool <clears throat> I am wearing my uh, Wounded Warriors hat today. Toys for Tots. Uh, Toys let's for see. Tots. And this is a cool button of. A listener gave me back when I was in radio from the 101st Airborne Division. The Screaming Eagles, I believe is what they call them. Anyway, we're going to whip out the big razor here. Seven eighths from James Daniel Armine. Okay? Let me look at it. Let you look at it. Here we go. I want you to do it. Do it, do it. Do I am doing it. it. This is a chair. Mm. This is a chair. You're getting some on your shirt, don't you know? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll wipe it off. Yeah. Wow, this thing shaves great. It's really sharp, too, so you have to be careful, don't you? Yeah. Because why? Because cut. You your cut face your off. face off, right? Yes, and then you'll have no face. And then you'll have no face. face. Or you will cut off your mouth. Uh -huh. No. We don't want that, do we? With your mouth. Oh, no, speaking. Mm, okay. That's my rules. That's your rule, huh? Okay, we'll go with it. And you always ask your dog. Hmm? I'm just trimming up a little bit to get close to the beard line right there. Just wipe some of that off so I can get a good glimpse. See how close I got. Just uh, sort of snugging up to it a little. Getting a little close. That's perfect. All right. Going to uh, put a little more lather on there. Stay away from the razor, okay? Okay? Okay, but I just want to see. You just want to see? Look at it. You can, I can see. see. No, I can't. You can't. You can't see me. Well, you can't see you. Oh, I get it. Don't you know? Don't you know? Why don't you get over here and stand on the side of the tub over there? Maybe you can see. He can't see me. He can see me. He can't see himself. That's what it is. Hi, everyone. The footage you see in the background is a mistake. <laughs> I apologize. <coughs>
what happened was I got a phone call that caused me to stop the, the recording process and have a second portion. I didn't know, however, that the portion you see now was being recorded. So I ended up with three consecutive portions. I was going to delete this portion and accidentally deleted part two. That was the wrap up and I apologize to all my buddies at South Florida's Wet Shaving. You do have a great smelling soap and aftershave. I wish you the best of success my friends. Thank you guys for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.